So welcome to this quick tutorial on how to do particle tracking using Blender. So when we open Blender, uh, this is the default layout. We have a default scene, we have a cube, a lamp and a camera in the 3D view, which we are not using now in this tutorial. And we can, Blender is composed of several windows that we can resize, we can split them. Um, we can then uh, join them together and arrange them as we want. We can even change the type of each window. Uh, so depending on the, the task that we are performing, we can have several windows for some different functions of the Blender. Fortunately, uh, Blender has some default layouts that uh, we are going to use now. It's the layout for motion tracking where some windows are already defined for us for this specific task. So first of all, we should save our file in a convenient, win in a convenient folder uh, where we later have also our data exported. So in this bottom window is where we can open the, the video or image sequence uh, that we're going to, to track. So in this case, I'm going to open uh, an image sequence. You could also open a video directly. In this case, I will we can select all the images by pressing the A key, or we can just select the first image and Blender will recognize uh, all the sequence. One important thing uh, about Blender interface is that uh, some shortcuts and uh, the mouse wheel movement, it's dependent on where the cursor of the mouse is. By default, the Blender sets 250 frames for each animation, or in this case, a video sequence. We can adjust that value. If you go here and press the set scene frames, Blender will automatically adjust to the num total number of frames that we have in our scene so in our image sequence or in our video. We can uh, then zoom in and out and depending on what we want, we can set different values. In this case, I will set just 700, the first 700 frames uh, of the sequence to be used. Then here in the view, we can change to view home, view whole or press the home key with the mouse in this bottom uh, window to see all the frames. So, in order to do the particle tracking, we then have to put some markers on the, the, the image that will set some feature to be tracked. Here we can move this time, the, the, the frame in the timeline to see how the sequence is going. And then you can zoom in and out to place some particles, some, sorry, some markers that will track the particles. Uh, these markers are not specific for particles, they are for features in the image. In this case, our features will be these particles. So in order to have, we can press the head button and then left click on the image, or we can simply press control and left click to have, to add uh, additional uh, markers where we want. So every new track that we had, has some settings that are defined in the left panel of this window. We can activate or deactivate this panel with the T key. And we'll, I will now briefly explain the, some of the settings. So we can activate or deactivate the red, green and blue colors if it changes, if it enhances the contrasts on color images and we have the pattern size that defines the size of the pattern we're going to look for it should include at least one particle in this case and then we have the search size that defines the area where blender will look for this pattern in the following uh, frames and we can activate the viewing of this search area here in the right panel by clicking this option 
search option here so we can see the area where Blender will look for the pattern. <clears throat> we have then some motion models that define how the pattern will move from frame to frame. So lock will just look for a new location of the pattern. Lock rot will also look for some rotation. Scale if the pattern changes its size. Uh, rot and scale, lock rot scale if change location, rotation and uh, size. Have fine if there is some distortion of the pattern, and the perspective if there is some change in the perspective of the object. So after that we have the match, we can match the pattern with the keyframe or with the previous frame, we will use the keyframe in this case. Then there is the pre-pass that makes a preliminary calculation with only translation. And we have also the normalize option that allows us to normalize light intensity if it changes during the video sequence. We have some extra settings, uh, correlation is related with the validation of the trackings. Uh, frames limit defines how many frames we are going to automatically uh, track zero it will track until it loses the marker and margin defines uh, the distance from the border of the image that we will accept or it will stop tracking the, the marker So as you mentioned, these settings are just for new markers. So if we change here, for example, the search size and the pattern size, and we have a new marker, we can see that it has a different size from, from the previous ones. If you want to change uh, the size of a already placed marker, we should do it in the right panel. We have here the right panel where we have a zoom view of the the pattern that is useful and we have all the settings uh, below so here we can change all the settings of the marker that we select with the, the right button of the mouse we have also here the the windows the, the position the some offset that we can put and the, the pattern area that we can change the width and the height uh, so it can be different uh, from a, a square if and it can help in some situations and also the search area can we can change the width and the height and the notice that we are changing just for this marker there is an option here in the left that we can uh, replace the settings for new markers by copying from the active marker but notice that in this case you will just define the, the size of the square so the, the, the new markers will also have will always have square patterns and search areas so be aware of that so how will now explain how we do the tracking itself so if we place a marker and we have it selected we can track it frame by frame by pressing this key here and you see that uh, the horizontal and vertical velocity are being plotted in this window here or we can press the play button and it will track the marker until it loses it either because some problem occurred in the image or because the marker left the image at least it was in this case here so we can see that it tracked the particle until it moves to the border and here it stops tracking because it reached the border of the image you can change this setting here the margin in order if you want to track it a little bit further so this is how we track we can track it forward or backwards i will now put some additional markers so i go to the first frame of the sequence and put some markers here in the in the particles these two are quite close so we put just one and we have then those additional markers that we will track just as an example and then to do the 
to export the, the data for post-processing. So if you have all the markers, we can select them all with the A key and press the play button. It will try to track all the markers at once until it loses them. So if you look here in this vertical and horizontal velocity, if you see any jump, that's because there was some problem like it here in the beginning. So you can select with the right click to see which marker it corresponds. And we can go to in the timeline to this position again to see what happened. So in this case, the, the marker changed right in the beginning from one particle to the other. So I will select just the one we are interested in and you can see that this marker moved to another particle just in the, in the first frames and then moved back to the particle that we want. So there is here one wrong position that we can change it manually uh, by pressing the G key with the marker selected and then with the mouse we can move it and confirm it with the left key click or we can change here in this zoomed window with the left click. So in this case we can delete then all the data and redo it again for this marker and it now it looks okay. So I will put back all the markers again and you see that we still have some problematic markers here. Let's see what happened to this one. Let's go back to the first frames where it happened and we can see that the problem was also similar. So there was a jump here from one particle to the other and then we have two markers following the same particle. So it's useless. So in order to correct this, we can move our marker to the particle that we want. And in this case, we can probably adjust this uh, search area in order to avoid the marker to, to go to look for the, the region of the other particle. So we can increase here the, the width, put it as a rectangle. We know that in this case, particles are moving mostly horizontally. So we will now just look in this region and will not look for the other particles. So we track it again and we see that now it looks okay. So when we have all the markers uh, tracked, we can then export this for this data for post-processing. We will use this upper window here. It's a 3D view window that we are not using it so we we'll, can change it to a text editor and we can open a Python script that will do all the work for us. I will activate here the highlighting, syntax highlighting and you can see here the Python script. You can copy this text directly to a text editor or you can just go to this link that I will put also in the bottom of the video to download this script. You then then just press the run script and it will uh, automatically create a data folder where we have some CSV files with all the data for all the particle, all the markers that we, we used. In these files we have three columns with frame, x and y position. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and hope it will be useful for you.